Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. The code of silence continues here at Warren D. LaSalle following an investigation into an alleged hazing incident with the football team. But now a new development, a new victim is coming forward. And evacuated Americans are back on U.S. soil tonight, but concerns about the coronavirus are only increasing in China, where new cases and deaths are being reported. Okay, Doc, but we begin with breaking news. Only local four cameras roll in court as a Northville teacher stands accused of carrying on a two-year sexual relationship with a girl in seventh and eighth grades. Jason Dean was in court today, formally charged with three counts of first degree criminal sexual conduct, but those allegations go well beyond that. Those charges claim Dean had sex dozens of times 10 years ago with a girl and the locations include a plane and a secret apartment. Larry Spruill is live at Cedar Crest Academy in Clarkston, where Dean was a teacher at that time. Larry. Well, Kimberly and Jason, Jason Dean is currently on administrative leave at Northville High School, but we are here in Clarkston where everything started just about 10 years ago. Police believe everything happened inside this academy, Cedar Crest Academy, where he had sex with his student. She was just in seventh grade. Local 4, the only TV station inside this 52nd District Court in Clarkston Wednesday afternoon. Our cameras rolling as 36-year-old Jason Dean faced a judge via TV monitor for some serious and disturbing charges. In this case, you're charged with three separate counts of criminal sexual conduct, first degree. Now, this case dates back just 10 years ago. Jason Dean was 26 years old at the time and a teacher here at Cedar Crest Academy. Police said it was in 2010 when he started having sex with his seventh grade female student inside his classroom. Police said the relationship first started online using AOL Messenger and lasted about two years. The defendant and victim had sexual intercourse in defendant's classroom at the Cedar Crest Academy three to five times, which included oral sex at the school uh, between the defendant and the victim. But police said Dean did not stop there. Dean and the little girl also had sex at her parents' home, a hotel in Waterford Township, a separate apartment he hid from his wife and kids. And defendant read in an apartment at the River's Edge apartment in Waterford. Uh, according to the victim, they had sexual intercourse at least 30 times at that apartment. And on an airplane. Finally, the victim engaged in sexual activity with the defendant on an airplane on a return flight from Orlando, Orlando, Florida, uh, during the eighth grade class trip. I also reached out to the academy where Dean worked and they sent us this statement. It says, in part, Cedar Crest Academy had no knowledge of the situation until January 28th of 2020. We are fully cooperating with law enforcement and following their directives for information we may release. Our primary concern is for the safety, health, and well-being of our students, staff, families, and community. We believe there is no threat of safety to our current students and family. And I also reached out to, to North Northville High School, where Dean is currently on administrative leave to find out a current status. They simply tell me no comment. We're live in Clarkston tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. Larry, is there any possibility of more victims? Well, Kimberly, yes. Yeah. So the prosecutors told the judge inside that courtroom today that police are investigating information where they believe there could be more victims. They are asking anyone else to come forward. Kimberly? Disturbing. All right. Larry, thanks. Less than 24 hours after the St. Clair County prosecutor declined to press charges in the De La Salle hazing case, a new accuser has come forward. And that accuser and his father are said to be cooperating with Warren police. Let's get to Sean Lay, who's live in Warren tonight. And this is quite a change, Sean, considering neither the victims nor the school cooperated with police before. That's exactly right, Jason. Just got off the phone for the very latest with Warren Police. They say that new victim and his father were just in giving their report, giving their side of what they know about this. He is the only victim that has been willing to tell police what happened. The other thing we're hearing today, a big development we're hearing from, finally hearing from the president of De La Salle, telling parents in an email today that school officials 
are cooperating with authorities despite police and prosecutors disagreeing with that. The school is saying that they have no knowledge of any destroyed evidence, something the prosecutor brought up yesterday. And now we've learned that security footage from the hallway near the locker room where the hazing took place has been taped over. Big picture on this. Police is, are now saying tonight the case here at De La Salle far from over. This is something that we've needed for a long time. Warren police investigators say no victims in the De La Salle football hazing scandal would ever talk to them. Now that a prosecutor says charges won't be filed, the father of one victim has said enough. He told police today someone needs to be held accountable. So his son is now willing to talk. There was a crime committed. The St. Clair prosecutor's office clearly indicated in his report that there was a crime committed, but there was no cooperation and there was a cover up. Dwyer says school officials have an obligation to cooperate just like anyone else. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's very disappointing. And I think something has to be done over at De La Salle, but it's tainted. It was tainted from the beginning because you have somebody running the school over there that is not cooperating with the prosecutor's office and is not cooperating with the Warren Police Department. That person Dwyer is calling out is De La Salle President John Knight. Neighbors of the school say it's past time. De La Salle leaders step up to lead. It's a good school as far as the kids learning things, but the, the corruption and things that's going on in there, I mean, it's not just not there. Now, each time we're here at De La Salle following up on all these new developments, we do ask the president, John Knight, to speak with us. We have never heard back, but we're digging deeper into this letter and some things stand out to us. Uh, the letter that went home to parents today from De La Salle, including this uh, this uh, bit here. Information was obtained that students in the locker room were not always supervised, which made hazing incidents possible. The football coach was released and additional information became available thereafter. This information was shared with the prosecutor's office and with law enforcement. Jason again just got off the phone with police. They believe now that one victim has come forward. They believe others may too. Back to you. Well, yeah, that would be another development. Is there any word on what evidence was lost or destroyed? We asked the police commissioner that very question today, knowing that a broomstick was the start of all of this being used in this alleged hazing incident. Police would not confirm what exact evidence was lost or destroyed. But we did again hear from the dealer South president in the letter saying that videotaped evidence was accidentally uh, videotaped over part of the video system wasn't intentional. He was mm -hmm. saying it was it was lost because the system tapes over itself every 14 days. All right, we'll see how this new development plays out. All right, Sean, thanks. In good health tonight, the CDC is warning the public that more coronavirus cases are likely to emerge here in the U.S. Yeah, that warning comes as infections accelerate in China and begin to gain a foothold here in the United States and other countries. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with the latest on that situation at home and abroad as well, Doc. Yeah, Kim and Jason. In fact, a plane load of Americans evacuated from Wuhan are back in the U.S., but they're not going home just yet. First, health officials want to make sure none of them are sick. As a precaution, even the flight crew was kept isolated from the passengers during their journey back. Back on home soil, escaping the coronavirus outbreak spreading in China and beyond. The whole world needs to be on alert now. 201 Americans landing safely in California, but still under careful observation after leaving Wuhan, the epicenter of infections. We are going to monitor them for the full extent of their incubation period. While nearly 6,000 cases are in China, 68 cases have been confirmed in more than a dozen other countries. Although the numbers outside China are still relatively small, they hold the potential for a much larger outbreak. Here in the U.S., still five confirmed cases with other tests still pending. Some major airlines have either stopped flights to China altogether or reduced travel to and from there significantly. I believe that the world is pulling together to respond to this outbreak. We are at an important juncture in this event. The World Health Organization calling the spread of this fast-moving virus of grave concern, prompting another emergency meeting to decide whether to declare this is a global health emergency. Now here in Michigan, we're still awaiting the test results from a person in Washtenaw County who is considered a possible case. Now coming up at six, I'm answering the questions that I'm hearing the most about the coronavirus, including the symptoms it does and does not cause. Yeah, yeah. Okay. a lot of questions. Yeah, Thanks, Doc. Sure. We'll be looking forward to that.
All right, well, uh, following a bitter battle over the state budget and a stalemate when it comes to fixing Michigan's roads, it's a safe bet Governor Whitmer is going to have plenty to talk about in her State of the State address tonight. Mar McDonald is live in Lansing ahead of the speech at 7 with a preview of what we can expect tonight. Mar, good evening. Hi, Kimberly, good evening to you. And you know what? These addresses always have sort of like a party-like atmosphere for all the politicos. Tonight, it is absolutely no different. These speeches tend to follow a similar template, which is a governor will lay out what they want to do, and then they take a couple victory laps for things they feel that they have accomplished. But make no mistake, the big push tonight is going to be, once again, roads. After last year's big belly flop of a roads fix, which consisted of hiking gas taxes by 45 cents, which was dead on arrival the day she announced that was her plan to, as her campaign put it, fix the damn roads, here we are a year later, and the governor is going to go with this again, this time proposing having the state bond for money to fix roads. But bonding isn't the only option here. Metro Detroit legislators have been griping the formula used to determine where roads funding goes needs to be rethought. And this week, the Michigan Senate just passed a bill which is authorizing a study to look at the feasibility of toll roads. She has to use all the tools that she has at her disposal uh, to be able to get Michigan back on the right track. And so we would certainly support her taking action um, to do whatever she can to fix Michigan's roads. Back here live. So what does the Republican led legislature think of this entire bonding proposal? Well, you might be surprised. We spoke with Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky. He shares his thoughts with us tonight at six. And we're going to talk about more of what else is going to be expected in this address, which is supposed to be what I have been told short, sweet and no nonsense. We're live in Lansing tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. And we will be watching and we'll see you again coming up in our six o'clock hour. Mara, thank you. Our live coverage of the State of the State Address starts at seven tonight right here on Local 4 and online at clickondetroit.com.